Hey everybody, welcome back to What's for Dinner. I hope you're doing awesome. It's 4.17 on, what are we, what are we today? Today's Wednesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Church day. Yay. I'll I was, say it. Yeah, Church Day, I'll say it now. Like, hope to see you guys there tonight. Yeah, I was glad when they say let's go to the house of the Lord. Yeah, gets exciting. All right, guys, so tonight for dinner. Oh, whoa, gosh, I always get ahead of myself. I have to remember to tell you all, this is the most important thing ever is that to make sure that you don't take us seriously here, make sure that you um, reach out to your healthcare provider with any questions that you have, and nothing you hear here to, you hear tonight should be considered medical advice. This is just purely for ed informational, educational, entertainment purposes. All right, now we got through all that. So tonight, we are back to having steak again. I'm so thankful I my taste and smell has come back with a vengeance this last few days after my little bout with COVID. And um, by the way, thank you to all you sweet people out there who were sending over like the, uh, the different protocols and whatnot to get taste and smell back. I didn't have to, fortunately I did not have to do that, but um, thank you again for doing that, it's very sweet. So I just barbecued, uh, what are we doing tonight? Filets, hon, right? Uh, I, yeah, we did Are filets. they all filets? They're all filets. Oh, I thought so. I pulled you out, Ribeye, sorry. No, no, you got lean cuts tonight for me. I don't me, like so. you, maybe. Maybe, so we got filets on the barbecue. And then some leftover air fried bacon. No, that's kind of puny over there. There's not well, a whole there's lot left. More over there, but I know nobody likes it cold. So gotcha. Okay, what do we got going on over here? So I just did a very thin layer of marinara, and then shredded mozzarella, pepperoni, and then I just broiled it for about ten, well, however long to get it looking like this. Yum. All right. And then is this farm fresh eggs? They are. Yay. So again, our super awesome nurse Angie brings these in, in for us every week. Yep. And they are absolutely delicious. Okay. And I have my little concoction because Janie keeps giving us amazing tomatoes. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, I think it's... here in the next few weeks, Teresa's is probably gonna switch to completely plant-based. <laughs> so um, she might she might be talking plant-based and vegan and I might be talking carnivore <laughs> and we might be at odds with each other. They're so wonderful though, so <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess tonight you've got some information you wanna share with everybody. Yeah, you know, just because we talk about sugar and insulin, and insulin is the root cause of a lot of issues because it causes inflammation. Every time you spike your sugar, you set off the clotting cascade. That is why diabetics are at double and triple the risk of heart attack and stroke. And, um, you know, when you become a diabetic, especially in the hospital, you get diagnosed in the hospital, like type ones get diagnosed with their blood sugar at like 600 or 700. Some, we, we have a family member that was diagnosed with a blood sugar above 500. And then what do they serve you? Pancakes with sugar-free syrup and applesauce and blueberry muffins and bananas and all the things that are gonna keep your sugar up high. That's all we're trying to teach you guys is that food matters. So if you go to the store and buy an over-the-counter glucose monitor, which it um, doesn't need a prescription now, it's Stello, S-T-E-L-O by Dexcom, you could look at this, especially if you're a diabetic, you have to have a glucose monitor because there are foods that you are gonna see with your own eyes and data that you cannot eat, okay? Yep. So these are the boys. So this is particularly Blake. When they were 12, what they wore these. Now, let's just look at one first. These are non-diabetics. These kids are not diabetics. These kids' pancreas work beautifully. Perfectly healthy 12-year-old kids when we did this. Yep. yep. So you can see, I want people routinely under 100 or not much higher than that because when you go above that, that's when you nick your coronaries and carotids and that's what sets you up for heart attack and stroke. And just before you go on, honey, yeah, just so everybody point. knows, yeah, you're, um, you're looking at the, uh, this is the glucose measured in your blood, okay? So that device, the, the um, glucose monitor Teresa mentioned, is you wear it on your arm and it's actually tracking this uh, every 15 minutes and then it aggregates the data all here and then you um, will keep a food diary along with this. So you can see which foods are causing your blood sugar or your glucose to, um, to increase. Yeah. Okay. So bananas, he had two bananas actually. His sugar was perfectly normal, doing nothing below 100. He ate that banana, he went straight up to 165. Now, because his pancreas works beautifully, it corrected and came right back down. Diabetics, you know, will stay up here. If you're a diabetic and you choose to have a banana, diabetics start around, you know, maybe 120, 140. So then when they eat a banana, you're going up to 250 for a banana that has less potassium than an avocado does. <coughs> So be mindful of that. So And also, so people know too, when you mentioned the pancreas, you're talking about the pancreas creating, uh, releasing insulin yes. based on the sugar. So as that sugar spikes and goes up, your insulin will spike and go up as well. Your body, your pancreas has no idea if he is responding to a banana or to ice cream. He just knows sugar went up and he's got to do his job. Yeah. Um, 
And then incidentally, I will tell you that on Facebook, um, somebody commented, the kid, somebody that the kids knew from the gym when they were younger. And, and I was saying a Snickers in regard to sugar would spike your sugar less than a banana. So he came on and he's a trainer and said, so you're telling people to eat a Snickers over a banana with all the ingredients and chemicals? And I said, no. I told people if they ate a Snickers, their sugar would go less than if they ate a banana. I'm just trying to show you guys why we do this every night is we're trying to show you the difference that food can make with insulin spikes and sugar spikes. And then when you crash all day long, you feel horrible. So you eat a food, it spikes your sugar. As you come down, you crave food. You eat it, you come down, you crave. It's just this vicious cycle. Yeah, and so the healthy sugars that come from fruits that people always say that, well, what about I'm eating healthy sugars, yes. organic fruit I'm getting it from. Your pancreas does not know the difference. It's still going to release insulin. It's still going to cause your, your insulin to spike. And it's going to drive the fat stores. That's yes. what we're trying to avoid. Yes. So, and by the way, for those of you who don't already know this, is fruit actually has a different type of glucose and it's called fructose, okay? There's only one organ in the body that can actually metabolize fructose, that's your liver. So when you eat a piece of fruit, the fructose from that fruit has to pass through the liver and the liver has to convert it to glucose. So there's an extra step. So if you guys have heard of fatty liver disease, um, so, um, or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Yeah. So it's the same thing, Fru fructose, any excess fructose that you intake that's beyond your energy needs is gonna get stored as fat. Uh, after it's converted to glucose and it'll get stored as fat right around your liver. And so fruit can actually contribute to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In the old days when I first started nursing, which was 1998, when I started as a floor nurse, you knew who the drinkers were because of not or, um, fatty liver. Yep. Now fatty liver is because of sugar and yeah. fructose. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so then his body responded. He came right back down. And then at 1230, they had burger, eggs, and bacon, our fave. And at 430, they had a steak. So you can see... This, they went swimming. So at 12.30 is when they had the burger, eggs, and bacon. Then we went swimming, which naturally increases cortisol, which will naturally increase your blood sugar. And then at 4.30, right about here, we had a steak. Yeah, nice and smooth. Okay. Yep. Now, the same time frame we were wearing these, we went to our water amusement park down in Branson, and both the kids had pizza and cheesy bread, and Blake had a funnel cake. Nate had Dippin' Dots, and it's not much difference. But... Okay, remember the banana here. And now we're talking pizza, cheesy bread, funnel cake, not as high of a spike at 12.30. Here's the 12 o'clock, not as high of a straight up spike as the banana and it kind of doesn't do much. It, it ebbs and flows because of all the fat. So you don't go up and straight down. And why is that? That the- Because uh, there's fat. Yeah. The so fat. fat slows the rise and then you can't fall as far down. A patient of mine also did Andy's, our custard, which Florida has it now too custard versus a banana custard was only 133 everyone's banana is about 160 and above um you know and a lot of the endocrinologists here in town besides wanting to report me at times say i'm a quack because i say if you're a diabetic you can't have fruit you can't metabolize fruit properly they say you absolutely can't have an apple you just eat it with a piece of cheese so they're trying to get fat with the apple so it kind of slows the spike and maybe you won't spike as high and then come back down but all of you guys that are diabetics have to realize that you're starting much higher. Your normal resting blood sugar is much higher than like these kids. Or mine runs, when I wore a glucose monitor, it was so boring. I run in the 60s. So if I'm going to eat pizza, cheesy bread, a banana, any of that stuff, and I'm starting at 60, I might not even get above 100. Yeah. So oatmeal, all that kind of stuff. Gotcha. We do have a couple of uh, questions. On, oh, were you done? Uh -huh. Okay, I just wanted. So Peggy reach, uh, is is saying. Um, so her blood sugar is pr um, pretty much above a hundred, even fasting in the morning and eating carnivore. Yes. So if it's the Peggy I'm thinking about, she's got to reverse some damage inside, like yep. pre diabetic dam pre diabetic damage, and stress is the other big thing, which I know she's dealing with. Stress will keep your blood sugar high. Not sleeping will keep your blood sugar high because all of those things, not having your hormones optimized creates cortisol reactions. Like you saw the kids swimming created yep. uh, blood, blood sugar spikes. So all of that stuff will keep your blood sugar high. And the dawn phenomenon is elevated blood sugar in the morning. It's the last thing to go. It will tick you off to no end because it will take years. Like yeah. a year. That's right as you're waking up, the yes. cortisol and your bloodstream it starts to get released to wake you up in the morning and it causes your blood sugar to increase. And so that's the, the dawn phenomenon. Yeah. And all the guys in our space, these doctors wear glucose monitors. And Dr. Syphus has said as he's tying his shoes to go for a run, his glucose goes up first thing in the morning because his body's anticipating he's going to go for a run and he's 
cortisol, cortisol is being released to get going. Yeah, and to answer the second uh, question here, Peggy, um, ex does exercising increase your blood sugar? Yes. I walk quite a bit. So here's the first of all, I, I don't want you to walking is not exercise. Walking is activity. I hate to have to say that to you. Me but, too. But yeah, but um, so are you going to burn some calories and some fat and stuff like that? Yeah, a little bit. So slow paced, long distance exercise or activity like walking is um is is uh is fat burning okay your body will burn a little bit of, but very little it's honestly not really exercise okay it's activity but if you do high intensity exercise your body actually does require more blood so running sprints or um, very strenuous physical workouts uh, like resistance training or whatnot uh, your body will actually take bl uh, fat out of storage and convert it to um, to sugar or glucose in the liver via a process known as gluconeogenesis, and it will use that for fuel because your body does at times need sugar, but your yeah. body can create the sugar on, on its own. Okay. But if you do go for a walk, it that will help your body shunt the glucose into the cells because you'll need it to feed your body, you know, energy. Yeah. So um, it is a it is a little hack that diabetics do. They'll get up and go for a walk. And please don't take that as saying to stop your walk. No. So I, I, I walk too. I walk a couple of times a week and it's fantastic. So yeah. just keep that up. But um, just understand what the limitations are with activities like yeah. gardening, walking, walk, you know, taking your dog for a walk, um, just things like that it versus totally. actual high intensity exercise. Okay. It annoys me because on my days off, I get up and I don't sit down because I'm doing things, but that's activity. Yeah. It's not exercise. Good questions though. Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. Okay. Right. So food matters and physicians and providers are trying to say food doesn't matter. You can't be healthy on your own. You have to take our pill, our injection to be healthy. Now psychiatrist or psychiatric um, area is getting involved in saying, if you're worried about your, your diet and your health, then you have orthorexia. Wait, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you have a disorder because you're at you're too worried about your health. I mean, you can't win. They are just every time we get going on something, they bring out this other thing to label you and act like yeah. you're crazy. It's you too, are not. It's too restrictive. It's yeah. bad for the kidneys, you know. I mean, all this other stuff. It's just it's the same old tired thing, you know. Anyway, so are you good? I am. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Well, tell us what you're having for dinner. If you have any questions, shoot them our way. We love you guys. We hope to see you at church tonight. Yes. And we'll see you next time. God bless you all. Bye. Bye.